Hey, what's up guys? The Explanation Pro is here. Today I'll explain the horror fantasy movie, The Mortuary Collection. Spoilers incoming. The movie begins with a narration by an old man, as a book opens and we're taken inside its pages. Then we see a newspaper boy biking across the town. When he reaches the funeral house, he approaches it and rings the doorbell. He tries to see what's inside and gets scared when an old man shows up. Dropping his camera as he runs away, the old man stops him and asks him if he doesn't want his camera back. The boy just calls him a name and runs away. He just laughs it off and gets back inside. Later, we see the old man preaching to a young boy's wake. He's a mortician of the place. After everyone leaves, he goes back to his office and notices that someone sneaks in. As he goes to check it, a book moves on its own. He finds out that a woman is about to open the coffin of the young boy, and he stops her. The woman is caught off guard by his interruption. He introduces himself as Montgomery Dark. Sam, as she introduces herself, tells him that she sees the signage outside and wants to apply for the job. He's asking questions about her when she notices that the place has many books. According to Montgomery, every book she sees tells a story about people's death. Catching her attention, Sam asks Montgomery to tell her one story, and he gladly does so. Back in the 50s, a thief locks herself in a restroom during a party. Switching on the light, she notices that the switch is wet and slimy, but she cannot waste time. After collecting what she stole, she throws the wallets into the trash can. She's about to leave when she hears something behind the mirror. Curious, she tries to open it. She even used a knife, but wounded herself in the process. When she manages to finally open it, she's horrified by what she saw. She immediately blocks the door as the thing inside tries to get out. She tried to call for help, but it's no use. She just decided to walk away silently, but the pocket watch she stole falls and makes a noise. She runs to the door, but doesn't make it, as tentacles tangle around her and pull her. She cannot fit inside the tiny space, so the creature pulls hard enough, folding the woman backward and killing her. Before closing the mirror, the creature turned off the lights. Sam is amused, but Montgomery tells her that the most important thing in every story is the message. Meanwhile, Montgomery hands her a contract to sign. Afterward, he tours Sam around. They are back at the place where the coffin is, and she asks him to tell the story about it. Montgomery declines, so she asks for another one. Starting with the story with a saying, a college student named Jack, along with his two friends, Top and Carter, are giving away free condoms to women and inviting them to attend their party later that evening. Carter spotted a girl walking alone. He follows her inside the campus and talks to her when Jake shows up and calls him over. When Carter is gone, they introduce themselves to each other. Before parting ways, Jake invites Sandra to the party. Then we see a bulletin board full of missing men. The party is already starting when Sandra arrives. Jake approaches her and they go upstairs. She asks him about the missing men and he pretends to care. As they were about to start, Sandra asks Jake to use a condom. While at it, Sandra is enjoying it, but Jake feels otherwise. Telling her to turn around, he removes the condom while she's not looking. Jake wakes up alone, but she leaves her number. He starts feeling sick when Carter shows up and notices that something is wrong with him. He tells him to go see a doctor because Sandra might have a disease and she might have infected him. Although dismissing his friend's suggestion, he still went to see the doctor. At first, the doctor is still joking around, but when he sees Jake's test results, he became serious all of a sudden. Checking him using a stethoscope, the doctor hears something growling inside him. When the doctor leaves for a while, Jake reaches for the test results to find out that he is pregnant. He tries to call Sandra when he gets home. It takes some time for him to successfully contact her, telling her that he wants to meet her. He hurriedly tried to leave when he's blocked by his frat mates. They didn't let him go until a traditional ritual is done. Afterward, he hurriedly leaves and goes to Sandra's place. A man greeted and escorted him inside. When Sandra's mother sees his condition, she already knows what happened and calls for her daughter. Jake is in pain and puts it all out to Sandra when she shows up asking her what she did to him. Sandra returns the question of whether he used protection when they had sex. He admitted that he removed it. The mother told Jake that it's about to come out. Sandra, on the other hand, leaves as Jake is about to give birth. Then his penis bursts open and he dies. The mother gets the baby and silently carries it upstairs. When she's about to leave, she steps on a toy and makes a noise, waking up all the babies in there. Back to the funeral house, Sam is more entertained by the story. Montgomery then leaves her for a while. Sam hears a noise and sees the coffin being lowered down. They continue the tour, and he takes her to the embalming room. Inspecting the dead body, she notices a wedding ring. Handing it to Montgomery, he tells her another story. There is a couple named Carol Peters and Wendell Owens. Carol is sick and bedridden, while Wendell takes care of her. Coming home from the grocery store one night, he meets his neighbor, Ms. Avery. They talk for a while, and she shares how free she is after her husband died. In their unit, Wendell prepares food and takes care of his wife. After checking up on his wife, the doctor said that Carol is stabilized and that she can still live for a year or more. Wendell then admits to the doctor that he is tired. That's when the doctor recommends a pain medication for his wife. 
This medication will kill her if she takes an overdose. Later that night, Wendell prepares a dinner date for the two of them. After giving her a present, an Arctic hair figurine which she used to like, he begs for her wife to respond. Not getting any, he puts the medicine in her food and feeds her. Carol suddenly moves. Wendell was shocked, so he hurriedly unbuckles the belt that's keeping her still and makes her vomit the food. Relieved that it's done, he lets go of her. Forgetting to put on the belt, she bumps her head on the table. Wendell rushes to help but gets shocked by what he saw. The Arctic hair figurine that he put on the table pierces through Carol's head. He was so shocked that he lets go of her and she bumps her head again. He calls the doctor, tells him everything and asks what to do. The doctor suggests throwing away her body and not calling again. Having no choice, he gets the suitcase of Carol's wedding gown and places her inside it. But she's too big, so he decides to cut her legs off. Carol suddenly grabs and screams at him. He then grabs the hair figurine and pulls it out, finally killing her. On his way out, he uses the elevator. Going down, the elevator gets stuck. He tries opening the door but only manages to open it up a little. Shouting out his frustrations and throwing out his wedding ring, Ms. Avery hears him. She goes to call the police for help. The door suddenly shuts and the elevator goes down continuously. He peeks through its window and sees memories of him and his wife. He looks back and everything seems in slow motion. He floats up in the air as he sees his wife get out of the suitcase. However, it's not the same Carol. Instead, she looks like a monster. She's holding their wedding ring, slowly puts it on Wendell's finger as they slowly hug and kiss each other. When the police find him, Wendell is already insane. Sam this time didn't like the story. Montgomery finally takes Sam to the heart of the house. As he was about to cremate the body, Sam stops him. She admits that she's not there for the job, but the boy, saying that she's the reason why Logan, the boy, died. And then she shares Logan's story. One stormy night, Sam is currently babysitting Logan. His parents called, telling her that they'll be home later than expected, as she's told. She checks Logan and finds him sleeping in his room peacefully. She then goes to the kitchen to prepare her dinner. Enjoying the music, she doesn't hear the news about the riot and a possible escapee from a mental asylum. Unaware of the situation, she goes out to throw the garbage, but doesn't notice the broken window. When she gets back inside, she notices a strange man, all wet because of the rain. She silently goes to the kitchen to grab a weapon when the man appears behind her. She backs away, but when he asks for help, she doesn't hesitate to lend a hand. The telephone rings again, and it turns to voicemail. It's the mother, alerting her about what happened in the mental asylum and a serial child killer on the loose. Noticing that the expression of the man changes when he hears Logan's name and sees some kids drawing in toy, she acts quickly. She attacks the man first. They fight, but the man is stronger. He sets off to find Logan. Sam catches up, but he throws her to the ground and loses consciousness. The man goes to Logan's room. After hearing a loud thud and scream, Sam regains consciousness. She grabs a weapon and follows him. The man is frustrated that the kid is not there. Another fight broke out, and he overpowers her again. She's crawling away, but the man catches up to her. He's choking her when Logan's parents arrive, but they couldn't get in because the door is locked. Meanwhile, she tried to talk her way out by convincing the man that he's not a killer. The expression of the man changes, and he lets go of Sam. He walks away, and Sam took this chance to push the man from the second floor. She then goes downstairs to finish him off. When the parents finally get in, they see the man's dead body. The father realizes something. The mother rushes into Logan's room when a follow-up news report is shown, confirming that a patient escaped from the mental asylum. Her name is Charlotte Gibbons, a child murderer and a cannibal. The father goes to the kitchen. His wife arrives shortly, telling him that Logan is not in his room. Suddenly, they hear the oven's timer stop, and they're horrified to see the body of their dead son inside. It was Sam all along. Montgomery is not phased, but rather amazed by Sam's story. After getting what she wants, she stabs him. Sam starts running away, but she's shocked to hear him laugh. Looking back, she sees that Montgomery is not a human, and her stab doesn't affect him at all. She starts running again and manages to reach the front door, but she's trapped inside. Sam runs away when she sees Montgomery and hides in one of the rooms. She finds herself inside a huge library when Montgomery reappears. She asks him what's happening, and he explains everything to her. Books start falling off the shelf. It turns out that the library that they're in contains a story of evilness, and Sam has many stories in it. The books on the ground open, and the corpses of burnt children come out of it and attack her. Later on, we see Montgomery fixing a dead body. Then after settling everything, he finally steps out of the funeral home. But as he walks away, he stops and explodes. The help-wanted signage outside fell to the ground as the funeral home finds its new mortician. The story ends, and the book is closed. The movie ends with Sam being the mortician, telling the story to the newspaper boy from the beginning of the movie. The boy wants to leave. But the door suddenly closes, and Sam gives an evil laugh. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like it. We'll see you in the next one.